Welcome back, Hunters. I'm the Survival of This, and we return to Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, where, as you can see, I am now rocking the Zenogar armor set, and this one has a few nice little perks to it. It gives us the uh, the Flame or, <clears throat> or sorry, the Gloves Off level 1, Thunder Attack level 1, and really Load Speed level 1. However, it's very easy to be able to gem yourself up to quite a bit more. So let's see exactly what the jewels I got on. So I've got the Quick Load Jewel, uh, no slots on the chest, Ninja Duel, because our it kind of gives you like a taunt negative status. Basically, the monster would attack you more, so I just put that in to offset that. Uh, the Dragon Talisman I have gives us the Thunder Attack plus 6 and Flame Aura plus 9, which is why I have that in. And then another Quick Load, so pretty easy to jam it up for some nice little things. And we also have the Zenogar Heavy Bow Gun that we'll be using. It's going to look a lot different once we actually have it out and wielding. It is like basically like a motorbike without the wheels. Uh, Cha-Cha, I'm going to actually be having... Or no, sorry, Kiamba, I'm going to be having using the Pitfall Mask. This is one of the later masks you get in the village. Just going to lower my mic a little bit down so I can see a bit better. And the reason I changed them out was because as fun as it is to use Cha-Cha as, as basically ammunition to make up for him sometimes being a pain in the butt... Kiaba's a terrible targeting system. It often tries shooting at the closest monster, not the large monster that might be in the area, so more often than not, it's shooting completely at the wrong target. But what we're going to do today is we're going to take everything along here, and we're going to be taking on another subspecies monster. It's not really the most exciting of subspecies, it's going to be the Azure Rathlos, but I can really use the materials to upgrade some of the other weapons that I have. Like, it'll help us get the Agnaboom up to another level. So we'll basically start with the Azure Rathlos, and then we'll probably look at doing the Sand Barrier off next. A couple of subspecies, and then hopefully we'll be into more unique monsters on their own, because we do have Nargakuga we'll be doing. Or maybe we'll do Azure and then Narga. We'll start at least with Azure, because again, there are some materials I would like from it. So this was from a boisterous blacksmith who put out the quest. I was out digging for ore when I nearly tripped over an Azure Rathlos. That got my blood flowing. I ran halfway home before I realized I needed his materials for crafting. I don't care how tough that thing is, sick him. So we'll go after that, and we'll see how the Thunder Attack plus 2 does for our weapon. This does actually have an input uh, base of 10% affinity, which is nice. But we'll have to see what it kind of like feels like. Elemental stuff on the bow guns is always a little odd feeling. Like World Nicemore. Elemental ammo didn't feel that powerful, actually. Truth be told, it still doesn't when you compare what you can get for, like, some of the raw values. But we're going... Ooh, actually, you know what? I do have Thundershot, too. Or, Slicing, sorry. I I don't know if I'll try Slicing the Tail. Rathlos is a hard one to get the tail off of. Believe me, I know from having to try to farm the plates for his uh, armor set. Not fun. Actually, no, not just his armor set. I think the Jen Moran needed a Rathian plate and a Rathlos plate as well. But yeah, plate farming back in these days, oh god. Anybody who's been playing from, like, world up, you don't know how easy it is compared to what it used to be. Yeah, there's Big Ugly. Oh. Now, like, I gotta admit, I kind of like how much the green on the wings stands out for Azure in this generation. I don't think his, like, counterpart in world has quite that distinct coloring to the wings. Oh, you bugger. Uh oh. Let's get out of there quick. Yeah, Asher gets more aerial movement. He's a lot like his uh, more modern iteration. So you do gotta be careful of when he's up in the air, not just like the full up, even just the hovering position he's able to use that pounce attack. There we go though. And we'll try to be careful, yep, yeah, doing his swoop, swoop de whoop. I do like how fast the reload is on the heavy bow gun. Usually the heavy bow gun is a slower reload, 
but a very little, if any, recoil to it. So getting it so that way it's a little bit... Oh, actually, he didn't actually go back up to where he was. Oh. Oh, maybe he's actually able to chain those together now. It's been quite a while since I fought Azure in 3rd Gen. Yeah, he's definitely changing... or chaining the... I thought I kept you selected. Why did that... Again, been a while, so it might be that he changed his pin attacks together, or the aerial swipes. And there's the wings broken. Oh, and there's the head. So this at least was pretty effective at getting the part breaks on him. I just, it's hard to tell what the actual damage is kind of like, though. Nope, oh, I think he actually shot the Nahabra coming in after us, so that was helpful. Uh-oh. Going to do another attempt? Nope. Just going to plop down. And you can kind of see much more easily the motorcycle-esque frame or kind of the look they chose for the low rank Znogar heavy bowgun. Well, low and high rank. I do have to admit I prefer the Iceborne iteration or the... I think it was G rank either 4 ultimate or... Okay, no, he's going back this way. He's not going out to the other area. I can't remember if it was like brought in for ultimate or was somewhere else. It might have just been in Generations Ultimate, it's kind of hard to say, but basically the one that looks like a rail gun almost. Where, you, where is he? He wasn't flying out towards... Oh, he's getting food. At least I think he is. A little off... Okay. Little glitch for a bug for a moment there, but won't matter too much. No, oh, and that's the end of the thunder ammo after this clip. Hopefully, it did a good job at least. I'm also going to definitely try to get the shiny. Okay, nothing too good, but you never know. You can sometimes get some really good stuff, like plates or rubies or gems or just anything helpful. Oh. Okay, close enough that we were able to avoid those. Try to get out of the range of the sweep. Oh, well, thanks, Rathalos. And then I do still have Chacha using the slime attack. You get very limited uses from, like, the slime shots as a bow gunner, but giving it to your companions, I think, is a pretty decent choice. Ooh, there we go. I think, actually, Chacha detonated the slime, too. Now. I'm just going to try to get Kiamba up with the Mask Affinity, and then I can get them using it, too. Oh, wasn't even actually aiming for that, but we'll take it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about the slicing shots on Rathlos. It's just too much of a pain of how slicing ammo works in this old generation. What? what? Whoa. What the hell happened there to you? Oh. I've got the gloves off working right now, so one issue is in the old games you didn't get good real information in game to tell you what certain skills did. Like I think this is an affinity boost, but I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, it's a 30% affinity boost while it's active. Jeez, I don't think that even procced any. Yeah, so you can see sort of how the slicing ammo can really backfire on you. If it detonates when it's like on a moving part, it only registers the damage when the little needles kind of explode out. So only when you hear and see the, well, gushing blood do you know you actually got a good proc off of that. Oh god, I'm terrible with aiming this right now. 
But this is why slicing ammo is so iffy for me for, like, well, all Monster Hunter. The best incarnation has definitely been World and Iceborne. So I'm kind of curious to see how Rise does it. We didn't get any idea of what it's going to operate like from the demo. Oh, you're getting out of stamina, so I might be able to actually... Well, might have been able to, although... Oh, no, still can get those. If I can actually aim. Ow. Yeah, like, you guys, you might not have heard much, if any, procs from the slicing we just used. That's my big issue with it, is it acts so weird back in this generation. I will admit, first incarnation, so you could see why there's some issues or potential problems. Although I have no idea where he would have flown from there. I don't know if he's gone back to the nest. Yeah, I didn't come here. So I don't think he's going for food. And you guys are on edge, so more than likely he just went up to the next area. So we'll go keep fighting and try to take him down. Actually, I've probably shown you guys enough of the slicing ammo, but again, we'll just use it up because it's an ammo type we do have access to. I don't see any way we'll really be able to get the tail off. Like, there we go. That one got a few procs in on the wing. Yeah, it seems like it might even be better to use slicing ammo for somewhere like the head or on a weak spot rather than the tail. Okay. Um, actually, you know what, Kiamba? Let's have you do your thing. Show off the pitfall trap in proper. Well, it takes them quite a while to set it up, but at least it is up. Now we just need this guy to turn around, come after us, which... Shouldn't be too hard. Especially if we can get Enrage off. Yeah, easy enough. Just poke them enough and they will attack. Although, I was hoping he'd be more grounded for being able to show off the trap. surprised that he was able to change so much together like that. And then you may also notice too that you're going to start taking or feeling the damage a lot more in these last levels of high rank as a gunner. Oh geez, you're not limping yet, are ya? No, you still have quite the bit of effort in you. Okay, well, thank you, Kiyama. That is actually very nice. I found that using this, the Pitfall Mask as well, it seems like Kiyama has more, like... I'm not sure what the exact, like, resource they use is. Thank you, Cha-Cha. But he seems to do the dances a lot more often, and he's able to do, like, that health recovery one fairly quickly and readily, too. I'm just really surprised at how much health this rat has. Well, I guess I should say Los. Oh. But this really goes, I guess, to show you how much, like, affinity outdoes elemental shots. It's like, even using the 60 Thunder, we're still going to be using all of our normal two as well. He's not even frickin' out. That one hurt. He's not even limping yet or back to the nest. Oh, that's gonna be bad for us.
Okay, what are you up to? Oh, you're leaving. So I'll have to take a couple of those. Uh, eat a steak. Oh yeah, we're not really doing too good on ammo types either because of how limited the Zenogre Heavy Bogan is for him. And I honestly have no idea where he went off to. We'll try down here, just in case maybe he was going for stamina again, or trying to eat. No, not here. Although these guys are moving around, so most likely he's in the next area, possibly going after another Aptonoth. You can kind of see, they get more wary, nervous, and basically on edge. It's a nice little feat that I think was kind of the first introduction of... Oh! You're not Asherathalos! You're... no. Nope, 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 nope. We're not going to take you and Azure on the same quest. We certainly do not have the ammo for that. I don't think we have the build for it either, because I do think I need the affinity that my other sets kind of provide. So, we're just going to focus on Azure Rathlos, who might have actually gone up here. We'll see. Oh, yeah, he did. Not to sleep, though. Oh, well, that was kind of nice to get that. Ooh, although the reload time is very bad. Or, recoil is very strong for using that shot. Yeah, I think we're going to do Narga Kuga next, because I'm probably going to want to really make the Narga set. If it's able to give us, like, evasion and evade distance, those are basically essential skills to survive in these higher ranks of quests. There we go, getting some good hits in. I'm surprised how many flinches we're actually getting chained together. Let's work at that head. I think that should be your weak spot, but I honestly... No real feedback back in the old games either. That's so many quality of life improvements that World and Iceborne brought that... You really appreciate once you're back into any of the older games. Able to drop him out of the sky there. No, oh, there we go. He's actually rolling out of the way because he was about to charge at us. So we can get a few materials and then we'll be able to head back to the village. I am surprised at how much time it took to take down him, though. Really goes to show that the. Actually, I should check and see what even is the damage on this. Like, what are the numbers? 309, so it's pretty far below in the Freighter Deus for its attack, for its damage, but that's still not a bad number for being a kind of upper high rank weapon, I suppose. Just get rid of some of the Jaggies, causing some problems. And we do not have anything to crouch fire to pose with. But yeah, there's a nice look at, again, motorcycle almost. Just attach a wheel to the front and the back, and you've got a bike. And then the Zenogar armor is a nice looking set, too. So we'll head on back to the village, see what rewards we got, and if we can do anything with the materials. Um, I don't think so, to be honest, but we'll have to check, like, the upgrades. Send everything back. What do we get here? Uh, precision plus five cluster shot. I guess we can take that. What's the other one? Nah, KO plus two. Nah. There we go. That's Azure Rathlos taken care of. And I'm fairly certain we will be doing uh, Narga. Oh. Uh, chat for a bit. Uh, Night walk, Azure Rathlos now in Mocha Woods. Yeah, so, like, there's all kinds of monsters that are now out in Moga Woods. Where is the resource info? 
Asherathlos, Sinogers, Brachydios, Uragon, Diablos, Dramros. You can see, you basically keep adding up over time more and more. The high rank woods really open up to so many potential options. But again, as a gunner, you're going to run into issue with your ammo. That It almost seems like the bow guns were more of like a multiplayer support weapon less than they could be super soloed on your own. Just because of how often you run into the ammo restrictions. Well, let's see. Uh, da, 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 what needed... Oh, you needed... Okay, one carapace away from getting the Agna Hellblazer, which is probably the last high rank... Uh, Agnactor Heavy Bogan upgrade. Oh, those tail cases I do not think I'm going after because, again, it's so annoying trying to cut tails. <laughs> that one, we need some parts. Uh, we actually need Narga Pelts for that one. I guess that's actually it. Okay, I guess maybe it was actually like making a weapon that might have... Oh yeah, here we... Wow, that's kind of weird, actually. It's easier to make the full Queen Scion fire than it is trying to upgrade, I think. I mean, you do save some Zenny, which is good, because you will feel the restrictions or constrictions of that there as well, but... Yeah, not too much there. What about the Azure Rathlos sort of armor? There it is, the Wrath Soul. Expert hearing normal up. That's actually not too bad. Those would work pretty nicely together. I've been finding that the normal up is a better skill than the pierce, just because the pierce one doesn't seem to proc as often, unless really depends on the monster for the procs off. Like, normal up, you're always going to get that pretty steady amount of damage off. Whereas with the pierce shots, it is very hard to say exactly how much damage you are going to be able to get with the procs going off. If it's up against something that's not a very long monster, it's going to be very few procs, so it might be better to... That might be one I'll farm on my own. But we're going, probably going to switch things up again and go back to the Logiacris and the Fratidius, just because it is so strong of a combination. Now we'll put all the shots in the box. We'll stock up again. Yeah, I got a few good well-done stakes. Okay, so... Actually, let me put this back with all of our other deck charms, or talismans right now. So, we want the... Do look, Gaia Chris. And we were using the Fatadeus. And is that everything correct? Well, we might actually have to put in some more charms into the set. I think that we took some out to put in somewhere else. Well, maybe not. Did... I thought I had a set that was able to use the Expert Plus 2. Uh, maybe I'll still keep this, because with the weakness exploit that it does have... Yeah, that'll probably be best bet, just to stick with that, because of the weakness exploit. So, thank you guys very much for joining me on this episode of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. If you did like the video, be sure to give it a like. And if you have any comments, tips, tricks, or requests for anything you'd like to see in-game in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, be sure to leave the comments down below. Until I see you all next episode, though, Hunters and Survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy hunting.